Hi everyone, my name is Jen Balava. I'm a naturalist with Burlington County Parks. I'm going to share some signs of spring with you. It's important to get outside in the fresh air and look around for interesting things that are happening right now. In this slideshow I'm going to share some pictures that I took in the month of March previously to give you an idea of what to look for. I decided to start with the Eastern Kama. The Eastern Kama is a beautiful butterfly that overwinters as an adult under tree bark. It's found in the woods and it's named for the strange punctuation mark on it, the side of its wing, which looks like a comma. They'll often land and sun themselves with their wings open, as you see in the picture on the left. They're disguised to look like dead leaves since they spend most of their time in the woods and they feed primarily on tree sap at this time of year. The cabbage white butterfly is by far the most common white butterfly that we see in our area. It's seen flying from spring through late fall, and it's one of only two non-native species of butterflies in all of North America. It's actually native to Europe. The caterpillars eat cabbage, kale, broccoli, cauliflower, all kinds of crops in the mustard family. The cabbage white overwinters in the pupa stage so that they're ready to emerge in the first warm days of spring. This is the falcon orange tip. It's a small white native butterfly that only flies in the spring. Usually that means mid-April to early May this one seen on the left is the earliest falcon orange tip I've ever recorded, which was March 26th. The males have orange tips on their wings, which you see here. The females do not have the orange tips. They're smaller than cabbage whites, and they have this mottled pattern on the underside of their hind wing. Next, we have the painted turtle. When it's warm out, we can see painted turtles sunning themselves on logs. They've been under the mud, the bottom of water bodies, for the entire winter. So they're very happy to get out and sun themselves on logs when it's warm enough. These are one of the most common basking turtles we see in the parks. You may also see the larger red belly turtles. They don't have stripes on their face and neck. Painted turtles have more colorful stripes on their their head. There are three species of frogs that can be heard in early spring in our area, starting with the wood frog, which kind of sounds like quacking. Then the chorus frogs, which have a definite rise in pitch. It sounds like they're going right up the scale. And then finally the spring peeper, which are very loud, shrill peeping sounds some people mistake for birds at first. So those are the early spring frogs. One of the most significant things that happens in March is the movement of thousands of individual migratory waterfowl as they start making their way north to their breeding grounds in Canada. Here we can see very large flocks of snow geese. These pictures were taken at Forsyth National Wildlife Refuge. I've counted at least 700 to 1,000 at a time as they pass through our area. There's certainly many other species of migratory waterfowl that are very busy right now. Uh, just a few pictured here. You can see uh, the hooded merganser male, a pair of northern pintail, uh, a male northern shoveler, and one male and two female common mergansers. Those were photographed on Smithville Lake earlier this month. Great blue herons are the only wading bird that is resident in New Jersey. All the other wading birds migrate south in the winter. Great blue herons are solitary birds, except for when they're nesting. In March, the great blue herons will nest in a large colony known as a rookery, or heronry. The great blue herons that live on the western side of Burlington County and the vicinity of Philadelphia have a rookery on a small island in the middle of Dredge Harbor, and the rookery is visible from Amico Island's south overlooks, 
and is active between March and June. The best time to see the nesting activity is between March and April when the leaves are not on the trees. Once the leaves appear, they kind of block your view of the nests. There's normally about 50 great blue heron nests, as well as double-crested cormorants and great egrets that arrive as well. Eastern bluebirds may be seen in some of our county parks at this time of year. Right now, they're busy pairing up and looking for nesting sites. They do use the nest boxes we've put up in some of the county parks. Tree swallows can also be seen at this time of year and often use the same nest boxes as the bluebirds. They catch flying insects right out of the air. They return to our area in early spring and will stay here until October. This is a good time of the year to listen for the Eastern Phoebe. It's a migratory songbird that returns in March every year and stays until the end of the fall. This is the first of the insect eating birds to return to our area. They say their name Phoebe over and over and over again. You can listen for them usually near uh, any kind of water body in our parks. Phoebes are flycatchers, which is a family of birds that catch flying insects right out of the air and then come back to a perch to eat them. Spring Beauty is a gorgeous native wildflower with five petals that can be white or light pink and pink streaks on the petals and even pink pollen. The leaves are narrow and grass-like and it's a common low-growing plant in springtime in forested areas. It blooms from the end of March until April. Once the plant has been pollinated and has set seed, the entire plant above the ground disappears until next spring storing all of its energy in underground portions of the plant. This is an example of a true spring ephemeral. If you're looking in fields or lawn type areas right now, you might see some of these non-native weedy species. These are examples of different kinds of speed wells, which have four petals with various stripes. They can be blue or white. If you look out over a large field at this time of year, you're likely to see mats of purple. These are European mints that can be invasive. The most common species is purple dead nettle, which is kind of a bad name since it's not dead or a nettle. These have purple flowers with heart-shaped leaves that also turn purple in color. Now, henbit, which you can see here, has very similar looking fla uh, flowers, but the leaves are different. They're rounded, whirled, and scalloped on the edges. Ground ivy, which is also known as gill over the ground, is slightly more violet in color and creeps right over the surface of the ground with uh, scalloped type leaves. All three of these species bloom in early spring, have square stems, and are all mints native to Europe. And of course we have our red maples blooming in March. These are really gorgeous flowers if you look at them up close. Red maples have separate male and female flowers, normally on different trees. The ones you see in this picture are male flowers, which have only pollen. The bees that are out at this time of year will carry the pollen that, to that of a female flower, which will accept the pollen. The female flowers are darker red than the male flowers and have no yellow. If the flowers are pollinated successfully, then we will see bright red seeds on the female trees later in the month. These are called samaras and fall from the trees on the wind like little helicopters. Red maples can be found along most of our local waterways and wetlands. So I hope you enjoyed this slideshow and will be inspired to look for interesting things around where you live. Thanks for watching.